What is it that actually makes a headphone hard to drive, and do I need an amplifier? Should I be looking at impedance or sensitivity, and what do these specs even mean? These are questions which both people new to the hobby, and those who've been around for some time, quite often ask. So today, we'll be taking a look at how much power you actually need, and clearing up some misconceptions about both hard to drive headphones and amplifiers. I'm Golden Sound, and you're watching The Headphone Show. Let's first talk about the two factors that determine how difficult a headphone is to drive, impedance and sensitivity. Impedance is a measure of resistance to the flow of electric current, which means that for a given signal voltage, a high impedance headphone will resist more and therefore draw less current, whereas a low impedance headphone will resist less and therefore draw more current. Sensitivity, on the other hand, is a measure of how loud a headphone will get when fed a particular signal voltage, and it can be described either as decibels per one volt or decibels per one milliwatt. If a headphone has a sensitivity of, say, 100 dB at one volt, that means if you feed a one volt signal to it, it'll play at 100 dB. But some headphones provide their sensitivity spec as decibels per one milliwatt, not decibels per one volt. And this is a bit more confusing, because whereas voltage is voltage regardless of the impedance, with milliwatts, power, it depends on the impedance of the headphone as well as the signal level. So, one milliwatt for a 32 ohm headphone requires a different signal level than one milliwatt for a 300 ohm headphone. So you can't instantly tell which of two headphones is going to get louder when fed the same signal. So how do you know how much power you actually need to drive your headphones? Do you need one watt? Do you need six watts? Do you need more? Well, the first step is to take the sensitivity and impedance specifications of your headphone and plug them into a headphone calculator. We've got one on our website, it's linked in the description, and ours will actually convert decibels per one milliwatt specs to decibels per one volt specs and vice versa. So even if two headphones you're comparing don't have the same kind of specification, you can quite easily compare them. Then put in your expected listening level, it'll tell you how much voltage and current, which multiplied together gives you power, you need to drive your headphones to that level. But wait, you might be tempted to put in a listening level of say 85 decibels, because if you listen at 85 decibels, put in 85 decibels, right? Well, not quite. There's a couple of reasons why you might actually want to put in quite a substantially higher number to make sure that your amp can properly drive your headphones in all situations. And this is the first misconception we'll talk about today. The first reason is that music itself is not constant. You're not listening at 85 dB the whole time. Music has what's called a crest factor, which is a measure of the size of the big peaks and transients compared to the overall level of the signal. And so even if you're listening at an average level of say 85 decibels, there's probably going to be even momentary parts of the signal which go way higher than that, and your amp needs to be able to handle those. Secondly, headphone sensitivity specs are typically tested at 1 kHz, which is where our hearing is very sensitive. For something to sound as loud down in the bass region at 30 Hz, for example, as it does for us at 1 kHz, it might need to be dozens of decibels higher. Because of the fact that our hearing is less sensitive at lower frequencies than it is around 1 kHz, even if you just look at the content of an average song, it's not unusual to see the bass region 20 or 30 dB higher than 1 kHz. But whilst our hearing might be less sensitive at lower frequencies, power don't care. Voltage is voltage, and current is current. So, even if you listen at an average level of, say, 85 decibels, because of the fact that you need to accommodate much louder bass content, and crest factor, transients and parts of the signal that'll go way above average, you probably want to be putting about 110 dB into the calculator. Benchmark Audio actually has quite a good write-up on a very similar topic to this, which is why distortion needs to be quite a bit lower than your listening level to be guaranteed to be inaudible, for all the same reasons. There is a link to that in the description. But once you put in this number, the calculator will tell you exactly how much power you need to make sure that your headphones are being driven properly. So now let's move on to some myths and misconceptions about driving headphones and power in general. High impedance headphones are harder to drive than low impedance headphones. This myth is one that's commonly repeated among more general technology forums and groups, but it's not true. It seems to have come to prevalence because of the fact that most consumer audio gear, even if it is low impedance, is very sensitive. It needs to be able to rerun off phones and laptops, for example, without powerful headphone amplifiers. So when people move from consumer audio gear to high-end audiophile, high impedance headphones, and find that they can't get them loud enough on their phone anymore, they assume it's because, well, high impedance means hard to drive. When actually, high impedance means that the headphones will pull less current from the amp than a lower impedance pair at the same voltage or signal level. So in that respect, they're actually quite a lot easier. If you plug the specs from a few high impedance headphones into our calculator, you'll find that most of them need hardly any power at all, 
whereas many lower impedance ones, particularly planars, probably need a lot more. The reason that many high impedance headphones are harder to drive than most consumer gear is because they are lower sensitivity, not because they're higher impedance. Both specs matter when you're trying to figure out how difficult a headphone is to drive. The volume knob tells you how much headroom an amplifier has. This is one that I've actually seen quite a bit, with people saying things like, I'm running a Hyphoman HE6 and I'm only at 10% on the volume knob, or that amp wasn't very powerful, I had to turn it up almost all the way. But actually, the volume knob tells you nothing about how powerful an amplifier is or how much headroom you have left. The volume knob on an amplifier adjusts gain, which is simply a measure of how much the incoming voltage from your DAC is multiplied by the time it goes out to your headphones. It doesn't tell you anything about what the maximum output voltage of the amp is, or the maximum output current of the amp is, and therefore it doesn't tell you anything about what the power of the amplifier is or how much room you have left. The position on the volume knob needed to get to your listening level is dependent on the DAC output voltage, the amount that the potentiometer, the component that's actually attached to the volume knob, is attenuating the signal, and the gain of the amplifier itself, and you should never use it to try and judge how powerful an amplifier is, because it doesn't tell you anything about it. You could very easily have an amplifier which is a hundred times more powerful than another, but you'd still need to turn it up more to get to listening level, just because it's lower gain, not because it's less powerful. It, it isn't. But some manufacturers will take advantage of this misconception. Some of them are putting higher gain than is needed on their products because it makes people feel that an amp is more powerful, even if it isn't. So don't fall into that trap. Additionally, a similar misconception to this is that putting your amplifier in high gain mode makes it more powerful. In almost all cases, it won't. Again, gain is just a multiplication factor, and putting your amp in high gain will not change the maximum output voltage or maximum output current that it can supply. There are some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, high gain doesn't mean more power, it just means that the noise floor is going to be higher. Putting it in high gain if you don't actually need it just means you're throwing away dynamic range. So unless it sounds better to you in high gain, in which case fine, keep your amplifier in the lowest gain mode that actually allows you to get to the volume that you want. I need at least 6 watts. Headphone amps have been getting more and more powerful in the last couple of years, and in some respects that's great because it's good to have more power available for those who need it. But the reality is you almost certainly do not need that much power. Even for headphones with reputations of being very hard to drive, like the Abyss 1266, to get enough power for up to 120 decibels, as we discussed earlier, you'd only need 1.6 watts at 47 ohms. And for most stuff, like a Hyphaman HE1000 V2 or a Focal Utopia, for example, you'd only need 1 watt and 0.04 watts, respectively. But even if you do genuinely only need 1 watt, there is still a reason why you might still want to buy a more powerful headphone amp. The power spec of an amp tells you how well it will drive difficult headphones. The power specification of an amplifier is tested by playing a 1kHz signal through it, and then seeing what level of output power it can sustain while staying under 1% total harmonic distortion, either because distortion just rises to that level, or because the amplifier actually shuts off to protect itself. But whilst this number, as long as the spec is correct, means that the amplifier can output up to that level safely, it does not mean that it can output up to that level and perform at its best. In fact, many amplifiers, even if they can output 6 watts, will show very significantly higher levels of distortion at 1 or 2 watts. This amplifier, for example, can output a maximum of around 4 watts at 32 ohms, and if we test it outputting 0.1 watts into 32 ohms, performance is fairly good. But if we test it outputting less than half its maximum, say 2 watts into 32 ohms, performance is drastically worse, and we can show this behaviour on a THD versus output power graph. We can also include another amplifier that has a lower maximum output, only around 3 watts, but that amp performs much better all the way up to that level. So even though it's less powerful at maximum, it's actually going to behave better in demanding situations and drive difficult headphones better. The power specification of an amp mostly just tells you at what point the amp becomes effectively unusable. It doesn't actually tell you how well it performs up to that point, and doesn't really give a great indication of how well it will perform with real demanding headphones. So make sure that you check the actual power curve, THD versus output level, rather than just the maximum output spec. You'll usually find that with high impedance headphones where very little current is being drawn, amplifiers don't tend to degrade in performance as you've got a higher output level. So as long as you're not actually hearing clipping, as long as you can get them loud enough, you're driving them fine. With hard to drive low impedance stuff like planars though, you might find that even if your headphone amp can get them more than loud enough, you might be playing with considerably higher distortion, particularly in the bass region where stuff's 20 dB higher, potentially making things sound softer, for example. And this likely isn't because you're hitting the maximum output of your amp. Even if you've got a 6 watt amplifier and it can output up to 6 watts, whether or not that 6 watt amp can do 1 or 2 watts that you do need cleanly is a different question. 
So again, make sure that instead of just looking at the power spec of an amp, you actually look at how it performs at high output levels. And lastly, a Class A amp of equal power will drive headphones better than a Class AB or Class D amp. This is just not true. Quite simply, voltage is voltage, current is current, and power is power, regardless of what type of headphone amp is driving your headphones. You might have a preference for a particular type of amp because there are behavioral differences, but one watt from a Class A amp is not more power than one watt from a Class D amp. Watts are watts, no matter what. I hope you found that video entertaining and useful, and if you did, leave a comment with what topics you might like to see explored or explained next. And if you'd like to come and ask me and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts any questions, come and say hi on our Discord server or the headphones.com forum. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.